I say the same thing when I show up, whether it be a PA, a contractor, or it's just the homeowner. I say this in front of the homeowner, the PA, everybody. You know, hey, I'm an independent. I don't work directly for your insurance company. I'm a third party. Okay. Um, I'm incentivized to be thorough. Um, that's how I get yeah. paid. And, uh, and so I want to find every bit of the damage I can because if I'm helping you, it's helping me. But at the end of the day, if it's not there, it's not there. And I'm not going to put my reputation on the line and, and give you something that's not there. But trust me, yeah. I want to find stuff. I'm looking for yeah. reasons to pay your claim, but I'm not looking for reasons not to pay your claims. And yeah. uh, I hope you understand. We get QA'd. We get, yeah. And that's, that's the, I'll, I'll say that that's kind of like a last resort sort of thing. If it gets to, you know, they're really I like standing there fine. with the homeowner. That's my, that's how I introduce myself. I but I'll that. add, I'll say, listen, the difference between me and, you know, your contractor or you, Joe Bob contractor, is that I have oversight, right? I can't just go up here and just declare that it's got hail damage on it if I'm not finding it because QA follows me around. And if they see enough claims, if I'm buying roofs that shouldn't be bought, they'll fire my ass, right? So how does that help me, right? Um, they, I will get more in, tr in more trouble for, for missing damage than I will for overwrites or for, for whatever. And I'll get slapped on the wrist for paying for a roof that I shouldn't have up to a point beyond which I'm going to get in trouble. But if, I, if I'm missing damage, I'll get in even more trouble. So I, like you said, we're incentivized to find as much damage as possible on the IA side because we basically get a commission on the gross amount of that claim. So, you know, don't get sucked into arguments with contractors. Oh, really, it's man. not worth it. Or really, it, really anybody else for that matter, even the homeowner, you know, it's just not worth it. Well, Bob next door Wait, got a new me. roof. Oh, I can't help that. Well, what if Bob didn't get a new roof? And I just said, well, sorry, we're not going to pay for your roof because Bob didn't get one. That's right. what I say. <laughs> it goes just, both ways, right? I have, to, I have to take your house as I find it. And, you know, you may have a different, a, a slightly newer shingle or a different model. Or I, I can't f explain it. All I can explain is, is that there isn't the oh, damage on the is, roof. That's the, other, that's the other thing that you deal with sometimes. I'm going, well, we just bought that house, that house, that house. We bought all these right, houses right. around here. You know, First of all, they're uh, full of shit when they say that. You know, uh, that one Half. behind us is getting put on right now. That What are you explaining over here? I'm going, well, you know, this this roof here is only two or three years old. You know, you ought to know being in the business that a new shingle is more resilient to damage than an older shingle. You know, and, and I'm not seeing yeah, it. I'm especially just not, light just, damage. I, I, I'm just not seeing it. I'm sorry. It just, But I'm not going to argue with them. I'm just saying, hey, look, it's oh. a newer shingle is more resilient. I mean, I can't explain why it doesn't have damage. I mean, even when I sold roofs. Even when I was out there knocking doors, I mean, we we literally sold an entire block, but there were four houses right in the middle of this block had no damage. None. I, yeah. To this day, I don't know yeah. how that happened. It was just like these four houses. I mean, there was some collateral damage, but the shingles weren't damaged. It was like the lightest hill hit right yeah. here in these four houses, but every other house had damage. Weird. Absolutely weird. Yep. Yeah. So. And, you know, if you're an adjuster watching this, I would say take whatever anybody says with a grain of salt. If they're like, well, we got that one paid, that one paid, that one paid, that one paid, right? Maybe they did, but likely that's just part of their spiel. And that's what they just say to kind of put pressure on you to say, well, I guess if those all got paid for, I may, maybe this is hail damage and I should pay for this, even though I'm not finding any collateral damage. I, I'm not going to sit here and call people liars, except for those dudes that recorded me. Um, but at the same time, you can you have to you have to pretend like that that house is sitting by itself with nothing for miles around it, right? It's just it's it's on its own. You cannot it's on its own merit under any yeah under any circumstances. You cannot say well some other houses in the neighborhood got it or didn't get it, and so I'm going to make my judgment based on that. You you pay based on what you find at that particular house. Period. Right? And if it's got it, if you like looked at six other houses right down the street on with all around it. And didn't find any damage when you get on this one and you find it, I'm buying that roof. I'm not going to say, well, I don't think this neighborhood got hit, right? That's, that's the flip side of this, that a really big mind sort of like attitude shift that I had was, is I'm going into neighborhoods where there's guys d door knocking, right? Canvassing these neighborhoods and they, they get some of these people to like file a claim and I'm pulling, I know that there's no damage in the neighborhood and I get up on the roof and I'm surprised and I'm like, I can't say this isn't damage write it up and get, move on to the next one, right? Don't, don't argue about it. Don't not pay for it just because, well, I haven't found any damages. You got to, the house stands alone. It's on its own merits. Who knows if they never had a claim before and everybody else got their roof replaced three years ago and this person didn't. And there was, you can see evidence that there was some hail at the house. Your manager is probably going to tell you to, to buy it anyway, right? Right. 
because you can't they didn't have a, pre, a prior claim for, for whatever reason and you can't say that all of the stuff that you're seeing wasn't from the most recent storm that wasn't enough to damage those newer roofs but maybe damage this one a little bit it's too much of a gray area um chances are very high always consult with your manager when in doubt on things like this don't just say well matt said to pay for it and then i'm getting in trouble that's a gray area and generally speaking on in, in the, on the cat side property uh we have a fond saying that is tie goes to the insured and that's that's one of those cases always. where there's no other explanation for it it's got damage um i can't pr definitively prove that it's from this data loss or from the one three years ago because i mean maybe it was from the one three years it probably was but there could be some new stuff on it I'm, I'm, I'm buying it. I'm going to buy it. And I'll, I'll suffer the consequences, but I've never ha had to suffer the consequences in that situation. Okay, that was all well and good, but what if you haven't even gotten started yet? You're not quite sure, like, what an adjuster license is or even which one or ones to get. You don't know what gear and tools to buy. Do you even need a drone? In short, you want to know how to get started as a claims adjuster. How can you start adjusting claims? for money, right? We put together a comprehensive seven video series explaining in detail, step-by-step, step, the complete beginner's guide to getting started as an independent property adjuster. This is where you wanna start. And the best part, it's completely free and you can get started watching it right now at adjustertv.com slash start. In the meantime, YouTube has picked out a special video just for you. See you in the next one.